Hello and welcome to today's webinar, eSignatures 101 in Europe, an introduction to digital transformation with electronic signatures. I'm Teresa Resick, Director of Webinars here at AIM, and AIM is your host and producer of today's event. And with me today are Richard Medina of DocuLabs, and from eSign Live we have Olivier Richard and Alan Carter. And eSign Live by Vasco is the underwriter of today's webinar, and we thank them for their support, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. And as we get started, I just want to offer a few pointers for viewing today's webinar. By joining our webinars live, you can customize your own viewing experience, so feel free to open, close, or resize the different windows. And across the bottom of your screen is the list of widgets you, that you do have available to you today. You can download a PDF of the presentation at any time. Just look to the resources list, and that's to the right of the slide area. And there are also a few other documents and links in there to help you learn more about today's topic. Feel free to ask questions throughout the hour using the Q&A feature, and that's on the left side of your desktop. And we will hold these questions until the end, where we should have about five or ten minutes to answer them. But you can also use this feature to comment or ask for technical assistance. At the end of this webinar, a brief survey will open in your browser, and I would greatly appreciate it if you would take a few moments to to complete the survey and to offer your feedback and to suggest other topics for us to cover. You can also access the survey in the list of widgets across the bottom of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and it will be posted to AIM.org's resources webinars page in just a few days. Uh, and now to introduce um, the, the wonderful group of people we have assembled for our webinar today. Uh, um, first, we have Richard Medina, and Richard is the co-founder and principal consultant at DocuLabs. He's consulted, organi consulted for organizations in a wide range of industries, including financial services, insurance, communications, utilities, and government. DocuLabs was founded on three simple principles, objective recommendations, analysis grounded by benchmark data, and a specialization in content-based applications. DocuLabs has established itself as the premier consultancy in the information management and information governance market, engaged by most of the Fortune 100 over its 22-year history. And then next we have Olivier Richard, and Olivier works as a business development professional with eSign Live. And over the past year, he has worked closely with European customers in determining their unique requirements by analyzing, identifying, and prioritizing their business needs and helping them drive their digital transformation by building strategic e-signature plans. Then we also have with us Alan Carter, and Alan has over 20 years of experience assisting the digitization of numerous document-centric processes covering composition, management, and e-signature. And in his own words, he says, I just can't stay away from helping customers who want to move away from unnecessary and increasingly undesirable reliance on paper within their processes. So right now, I'm going to turn things over to Richard Medina to begin discussing about e-signatures. Rich? Thank you, Teresa. So here's the agenda for my presentation. Ames research shows and our customer experience confirms that the perceived need for physical signatures is given as one of the top reasons why there's so much paper and manual processes in organizations. So the purpose of my next 15 minutes is to provide you with introductory information that you can use when you are planning how to use e-signatures by themselves or with capture, ingestion, and workflow. Olivia and I will provide an overview of the basic terminology, concepts, and laws related to electronic signatures and answer the most frequently asked questions on the topic, including the ones that you see here on the screen. I'll first provide you with a quick introduction to e-signatures and then dig into how they fit into your broader strategy for digitizing and automating your processes. I'll also show you how you should evaluate your opportunities and prioritize which ones to do first, second, and so on. And I'll show you how to calculate and justify the business case for e-signatures. And then my co-presenter, Olivier of eSign Live, will provide you a lot more focus on digital signatures with, I'm the much, first one to admit, much cooler graphics. Okay, and I'm pausing a little bit between slides so everyone can catch up. Okay, so what exactly are digital signatures? Let's start with some distinctions and definitions. 
the terms are often used interchangeably, and it doesn't so matter um, how much of, uh, that you're strict about which terms to use when, it's more important that you're aware of the differences. So we'll start by saying that an electronic signature or lots of other variations is the vague general term for non-hard copy, non-wet signatures. It's a superset category that includes digital signatures as a smaller subset. An electronic signature is a broad category that covers scanned or fax signature images and public key encryption based digital signatures. It may be a bitmap from a scanned image, fax or picture of a wet signature, or it can be a typed acknowledgement or of acceptance. It also includes digitized signatures, such as when you sign for a credit card purchase on a tablet. The more rigorous term digital signature is, quote, extra data appended to a message which identifies and authenticates the sender and message data using public key encryption. Some digital signature systems will combine the authenticated signature data, that's the important part, with an associated bitmap image. So it looks like a wet signature, but the real work is done by the associated data that's lying underneath. Many types of signature are acceptable in law. If the process that applies the signature has authenticity, authenticity integrity, enforceability, and non-refutability. In English, that means that the process ensures that the right person applied the signature that can be recognized as their intent to endorse the document and that the document hasn't been messed with. It's easier to establish in a court of law that this is the case with digital signatures rather than mere electronic signatures. Olivier will, I hope, untangle a little bit of that. We'll go into some of the more details about how they actually work. <clears throat> and this, um, so here are the characteristics of digital signatures that make them most useful for your capture, ingestion, workflow, and BPM applications. First, they're open and standards-based rather than proprietary. And by proprietary, I mean provided by the enterprise content management vendor, the specialized product vendors, et cetera. Second, they reduce IT development, administrative, and related burden by playing nicely in your IT environment, for example, by using standard directory systems like AD. Third, they have productized integration with the systems and devices that will be involved in your workflows, like Microsoft, ECM systems, workflow, and BPM tools, other applications and devices like your phones and tablets and so on. And finally, they can work both with documents and with data. So they cover all BPM, and you can move not only from paper to electronic documents, but to, to the world of so-called frictionless data. Okay, so enough with words. Let's look at some pictures. Let's see some processes where there are some inefficient wet signatures that can be converted to digital signatures. So here's a process flow of a typical loan application processing scenario in a current state with lots of paper documents and a lot of manual or unmanaged process steps. Don't worry about the details. I just want to talk about the shapes and the colors here. The rows or swim lanes have the relevant roles. That is the mailroom application processing group, the application adjudication and underwriting and enabling technology down at the bottom, that bottom uh, row. What you see is a preponderance of pinks and yellows. The pink boxes are manual process steps like sorting and routing mail and paper documents. And of course, lots of wet signatures and paper. The yellow boxes are unmanaged electronic process steps like sorting and routing emails and images and e-faxes. Probably looks a lot of, like your processes today. There are no blue boxes. Well, blue boxes are the important ones. Those are managed electronic process steps. You like blue boxes. The wet signature steps for most processes like this are at the endpoints, the beginning and the end of the process, where the customer and others are signing documents um, then at the beginning, and then at the end of the process where, say, the loan or cl insurance claim or whatever is finalized. So here are some blue. Um, and here's what happens when you apply e-signatures as part of your workflow. I'm going to go through this quickly and superficially, but you can see – a typical way to transform the loan process from an inefficient paper-based manual process to ones that is electronic, largely automated, and efficient. And the good news, see the endpoints where the circles are, the good news is that this is very doable. 
It's not magic, and there are many proven deployments that have done this. It's a very well-trodden road. It's also achievable in phases or chunks where you can declare victory at each phase if you want to and have to, or have to stop because of budgetary or other reasons. It's often easier to do digital signatures at the end of the process first. So what I'm saying is do, look at the endpoints and do, start maybe at the end of the process where all the docs are under your control rather than at the beginning of the process. We typically start with digital signatures at this phase and then address the beginning at a, a bit later. Note that digital signatures are simple and they have huge impact on improving workflow and preventing slide back recidivism to post-process digitization. They have a change management effect as well as the obvious you know, improvement in operational efficiency. Recidivism is a big issue with uh, many capture operations where you try to digitize and you start with post-process and then people are still working with paper or screenshots and you slide back to the way it was before. This really helps you move forward and take that big step culturally. The picture here shows a really good scenario and covers not only loan applications, but other uh, applications and heavy you know, paper document-based um, processes like new account opening, buying an insurance policy, basically any process where someone is requesting something that requires submitting and receiving documents and data. It's a common best practice for financial services and insurance. If you're not planning to do something like this, I challenge you folks to ask yourselves, why not? Why are you still in the old world? The picture here, you see the circle, my lovely graphic, um, shows a really general scenario and covers not only loan applications, but new account opening and so on, as you can see. Okay, here's the an even lovelier slide. What this here is, is ugly but useful. It's an ROI calculator. Um, there are lots of ROI calculators out there to help you analyze return on investment for e-signatures and capture and workflow. Here's an ugly one. It's one that, that's been a real workhorse for us to show you a higher level model for ROI in a specific industry and process. The case here is retail mortgage processing. This kind of higher level picture of the process is most relevant to execs who want to see the benefits of the different options in their most important terms. So here it tracks um, FT, uh, cycle time, uh, full-time equivalents, serviceable volume of loans, and customer satisfaction, um, rather than just the number of documents handled, for example. And the three technologies that are most often used here are capture, e-forms, and workflow. What this shows is that you can get significant benefits by implementing all three, capture, e-forms, and workflow, but particularly e-signature at the endpoints. You can eliminate some steps at the beginning and also do some automated straight through processing um, for a subset of the applications. <clears throat> and if there's one thing that we've learned from doing lots of presentations is that audience just eat up, eat it up when you drill into spreadsheets. Um, failed demos are another big hit, but here we have a, my job is to do the spreadsheet. Um, and audiences eat that up, but hang in there, this will be quick. This is what a real business case looks like for doing e-signatures. Um, if you're interested, I can send you the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet and you can plug in your own numbers. Um, it's a real bank here, a large one, a case where there are lots of paper documents and an already existing capture operation. You know, it's not a green field. Um, you're starting in the middle, as most of us are. So as with many of you, we're inserting e-signatures into a mess where we're constrained by the current ecosystem of processes and technologies and by our budget. We also can't claim benefits that other projects are claiming. As I said, it's not a green field. So overall, with the, I'll decipher this, what we're estimating is a savings of $18 million over five years. That's realistic, but also significant. As you can see where the arrow on the right side is pointing, this is a highly conservative business case. We're assuming doing you know, you know, realistic assumptions like with 25% handwritten documents and many machine printed forms that can't be OCR'd at acceptable levels. E-signatures are a big piece of that because they allow all digital processes that can be processed straight through with minimal human touch. So folks filling out forms and approving workflow steps can do it digitally, so no paper and no OCR processes are even needed. We do assume, for example, 10% labor for QA, some exception handling, and so on. We're also assuming 5% increase in all electronic each year. Um, I'm going through these numbers uh, to show you that this stuff is, is 
thought out, it's realistic, and so on. They're good good slots that you can fill in your own numbers in. And the savings come from eliminating paper handling for wet signatures and reducing data entry and rekeying. Data entry, as you know, is hand typing the information on the paper or images. Rekeying is an error correction or QA step where operators have to type in what OCR has failed to recognize correctly or that you want to rekey anyway for QA. So which opportunities should you address first and how should you tackle them? I'll show you a simple decision tree first and then we can talk about the additional questions you should be answer, asking. Look at the population of all your forms and documents and applications that are candidates for e-sign. We're going to sort them into four big buckets. First bucket is do nothing. Second bucket is digitize them, but you don't need a signature. Third bucket is digitize them, but unfortunately you have to sign on paper. And the last good bucket is digitize and use e-sign. So first ask for each candidate form, you know, is it high value as a part of a valuable process, like part of a claims process? Or is it high volume, a process that happens an awful lot? If no to both of those, then just leave it alone and move on. Second, if it is higher value or higher volume, then you should address it, okay? Well, does it need to be signed or is it just for data capture? If it's just for data capture, then you obviously don't need e-sign, but you should try to digitize the form for straight through processing. Um, <clears throat> Next, if it's higher volume or higher value, value, value of volume and it needs a signature, can the signature be electronic? If not, then keep asking, keep asking the question because often the obstacle is cultural rather than legal. Um, and um, if the answer is really no, that you have to keep a paper, then consider developing an online electronically fillable form except for the signature. So you, do get, you push all the data ahead, and later with a trailing document, you have the signature. And this isn't a waste. There are ways to capture that data, everything but the signature by keeping it with data. The last case is the most fun, where you're actually addressing it with e-sign. And this is the one that we want to talk about now. Those, th these are the candidates for e-sign. Um, now here, I've, I, over two slides, I have a, another decision tree put simpler into bullets that you can use. Um, and I'll go through it really quickly. So now that we're just dealing with e-sign candidates, let's prioritize even further. And so remember, we're looking at the high volume, high value forms that can be um, uh, e-signed. So first, you obviously want to address only active and purge the obsolete forms and documents. And then number uh, criteria two and five help you sort the forms into how to prioritize the ones that you're likely going to do. Number six and then number eight here have to do with value, the impact and customer experience and so on. Number nine here has to do with complexity and dependencies. Um, and remember, and what you want to do is do simpler forms and so on earlier and do complex forms and forms where e-sign may not digitize your process. You'll still have manual steps. Do them later. And then finally, 12 and 13 are good reasons for prioritizing if they are used by other business groups or parts of the form that are used by other business units, like address change forms or new account opening and so on. Okay. So... Finally, what should your team do? Um, as I said, the theme here is that the e-signatures are great for ECM because you can do a little and get benefit and also do a lot and get benefit. So it's unlike most areas of ECM. You can't just do a little bit of enterprise search or a little bit of records management or a little bit of business process management and so on. If you do just a little bit, you're often left, pardon the image, with your pants down. But with e-signatures, you can do it in bite-sized chunks. The trick is to get rolling in a way that lets you scale across the enterprise, but don't get caught trapped into paralysis. The easiest step to take is to select an e-sign product that can be used in point solutions, but that will also be your enterprise standard. Maybe Olivier has a few ideas about which ones to use. I'm not sure. But let's talk about what your team should do. Here, number one, two, and three up here in the bullets. Um, form or sync up existing teams that are cross-functional. So that includes your forms folks, BPM folks, capture folks, but also your print and mail folks because you should be focusing on round-trip documents. You design the docs because they're going to come back to you. You should be sending your customers forms that, have created with the, with, that are created with the round-trip in mind. 
what's born digital should stay digital. Next, you should focus on implementation, not just having e-sign standards, and align with IT to get it executed. That's number five and number six up there. And the other items require a little more explanation. They have to do with, oh, good forms design that incorporate e-sign into user experience and branding and regulatory compliance and so on. This can get to be pretty complex stuff. Ask me if you want more, uh, more information on that. And then my last uh, slide here is what are the next steps? First, identify and prioritize your opportunities. I gave you a decision tree uh, for which are candidates and among the candidates, which ones should go first, second, third. Secondly, um, it's okay to do just one form, <laughs> but plan for widespread implementation and don't get bogged down. You can get rolling immediately with eSign. That's why it's beautiful. And then third, Go with a vendor and a product that can both start small but also be your enterprise standard. And again, that's me if you have any questions on some of the stuff I've mentioned. And now I'm going to hand the baton over to Olivia. Thank you, Richard, and uh, thanks for uh, kicking this off. So just before starting, I'd just like to define what a wet uh, ink signature is. So when we say a uh, wet signature, it's uh, really to uh, what we use when we see a typical uh, signature with a pen on paper. For us in the e-signature world, we're used to uh, using those terms, but obviously for anyone new, it's not a uh, common term. All right. So um, I know that some of you are probably new to e-signatures, but e-signatures are clearly not a new technology. And even if you haven't implemented e-signatures at the organization that you're working at, you likely have had the experience of e-signing some kind of document at some point in time. So this can be a form or an NDA or even an employment contract. Uh, for us, some of the earliest implementations that we've seen come from customers that actually date back to more than 20 years. Um, obviously, the technology has changed quite a bit since then, but what's promising for us as a solution provider is that adoption is actually ac accelerating, and that's especially true for industries like financial services and government. If you're in research mode or if you're evaluating different solutions, your company is likely interested in finding out what the analysts are saying, and you'll use this as a starting or justification point for implementing these signatures. Now, the great thing is that the trend around e-signature adoption has actually been validated by leading industry analysts. If you look to the left of the slide that I'm showing up here, you'll see that according to a Forrester Research report that was published last year, the use of e-signatures will grow by 53% this year. And Aragon Research has similar forecasts expecting the market to reach $30 billion by 2020. Um, personally, I think that these predictions are probably more on the conservative side because eSign Live is actually experiencing about three times that growth rate amongst uh, our own customer base. So continuing on adoption, as you can imagine, e-signatures are being used by organizations across all industries on any type of document that requires a signature. Here for you, uh, I've shared the most common application areas or what we call use cases for where e-signatures are being used. The net of this slide is really to show you that regardless of the industry you're working in, e-signatures can be integrated in any process. And some of the really common application areas that we see uh, include HR contracting for onboarding. But, I mean, really, we see contracting in all industries. All right, so now the question, why e-signatures? I think we all have a sense, and it's a good sense, that doing anything digital is better, faster, and cheaper than on paper. But even still, I want to take a minute to share with you what we hear from the companies we work with in terms of why they are prioritizing, adopting, and expanding the use of e-signature technology. And it's no surprise that the number one reason that we hear time and time again is that they want to improve the customer or the citizen experience. And we can conclude that digital initiatives and investments are driven primarily by that desire to offer a better experience. So what does that mean? That means being able to offer the convenience of applying for a loan from anywhere on any device, or not having to come into a government office, or even just removing the long process that comes with printing, signing, scanning, and then emailing. So with digital transactions, you see significant reduction of processing times, which in turn leads to much better overall customer experience. 
But beyond customer experience, an equally strong motivation for getting off of paper is that desire that could even be part of a larger corporate initiative to tighten up compliance and reduce risk. Um, now, I'm sure that if there's lawyers on the phone, this can probably sound counterintuitive that e-transactions can be less risky than the true and tried wet ink and paper counterparts. So if you're, you know, if you're signing on paper, you can think that it's counterintuitive to, uh, you know, use a signature. But there's actually proof in numbers. Um, you're probably thinking what numbers I'm talking about. Well, first, one million customer disputes have been avoided. And second, error rates have been reduced by an impressive 66% because of e-signatures. And I just want to add that those are actual numbers that we've seen from our own customers. But beyond those numbers, um, when asking yourself why adopt these signatures, it's really for efficiencies. Many of our customers have reported amazing improvements in productivity and massive reductions in cycle times. Common processes that on paper take weeks can be completed in just minutes with e-signatures. And as you move forward, after looking at adoption and the why of e-signatures, the next thing you want to look at is the terminology and the legal basics. In Europe, there was a new regulation that came into effect last July called EIDAS. This law covers electronic identification and trust services for electronic transactions in Europe. So it covers e-signatures, and this replaces an earlier EU directive which left a lot of interpretation to individual states and had the effect of honestly adding confusion and slowed adoption. As of last July, we have a regulation, and it's not just a directive. The law establishes the legal equivalency of an electronic signature to a wet ink signature. It says that a court in any member state can't reject a document as evidence just because it's in electronic format. Lawyers across Europe seem to agree that this new law will have a positive effect in clearing up confusion and encouraging wider adoption. And with this, there are three types of e-signatures. The first is the advanced e-signature, uh, simple, sorry. So, and this can be as basic as typing your name in a document. And then the second, the advanced e-signature, which includes digital signature security, like I mentioned, for non-repudiation and user authentication. The qualified e-signature is like the advanced e-signature, but requires a third-party certificate. And a trusted service provider or a TSP typically, typically issues a digital certificate to an individual in person. Under EIDAS, any of the three categories of e-signature can be legally effective. Uh, the difference between them is only what evidence it will take to reassure court that the signature is genuine and intentionally applied to the particular document. So. One of the biggest challenges today as you move to a fully digital process is the need to balance customer experience and security. So when you look at advanced versus qualified e-signature, this is something you'll want to keep in mind. So it's not a trade-off between security and UX, but rather how to deliver both offering an experience with the necessary security safeguards while ensuring a smooth digital experience. In the end, this is all about achieving the highest adoption rates possible. You want to ensure that the consumers of your products and services can get through the process in a way that's easy and straightforward, but with all the necessary security checks and balances in place so that the underlying transactions are secure and can be trusted. So you really want to achieve the best of both worlds. On this note, if you're interested in learning more about the legal perspective and legal effect around EIDAS and e-signature, we commissioned and co-authored the white paper with Lorna Rizal. She's a UK-based lawyer with Osborne Clark, who is a subject matter expert on e-signature law in Europe. Um, I think you can see this in the resource section of this webinar. So now, let's talk about what an e-signature really is. An e-signature is defined as any electronic sound, symbol, or process attached to or logically associated with a contract or other record and executed or adopted by a person with the intent to sign the record. So from this definition, we can break down the components of an e-signature like this. First, we have intent. There are many options for capturing intent in the digital process. You can use a click to sign method or you can capture a signature image on the tablet. The law, as I just covered, doesn't care or prefer one over the other. Whichever you choose, you just want to ensure that you build an e-sign process that clearly captures signer intent. So uh, think of intent that is indicated by the click here to e-sign buttons that are shown in the documents that you're e-signing. 
these should be conspicuous enough and the placement of those or any other signature cues in the document becomes really important. You want these placed on a signature line so that intent is clear. And then next in the definition, we have executed or adopted by a person. This refers to authentication or your ability to prove that Jane Doe is the one whose intent you just captured. How do you know it was Jane Doe? Again, lots of options here. We can use email authentication, we can send a unique code by text to achieve what is called two-factor authentication, or even knowledge-based authentication by answering very specific questions that only the signer would know the answers to. And lastly, in the definition, we have logically associated. This, mean, this means the intent needs to be associated to the authentication. We do this through digital signatures and by embedding the signature information in the ESAN record. And now that we have the definition down, I'd like to bring up this terminology cheat sheet up for you because as you read and discuss e-signatures, you will hear a number of terms being used, um, sometimes incorrectly, and that's okay. But my goal is to let you walk away from this webinar with a good knowledge base on e-signatures. So the first thing we're going to cover is the difference between an electronic signature and a digital signature. So an electronic signature is first and foremost a legal concept. So what does that mean? The laws talk about electronic signatures, not digital signatures. As I just covered, an e-signature is about capturing a permanent record of intent. It is truly the equivalent of a wet ink signature. A digital signature, on the other hand, is an encryption technology. Digital signatures are used in many applications, but what you essentially want is for your e-signatures to use digital signatures. Now, this is how digital signatures work. At the time of signing, we will run a hash algorithm. The best way I can describe this to you is to think of it as a digital fingerprint that is embedded in the document. At a later date, you will open the document, run the same hash algorithm over it, and can compare the two. If they matched, the document is valid. If not, something has been altered. Now, I know that sounds complex, but all of that takes place behind the scenes. Suffice to say, you want digital signatures to make your electronic signature secure. The last three terms here have to do with proving who is signed the document. The definitions on this slide, but I'm actually going to cover those more in depth um, when discussing workflow in a few minutes. So, I mean, you can't talk about these signatures without talking about security. I mean, the security of the tool is often a really important deciding factor for organizations that are evaluating these signature solutions. And I brought this up earlier when I went over the legality around these signatures. Now, because you're often dealing with legally binding documents, you want to make sure that the solution that you're evaluating secures the document and ensures that it cannot be tampered with. What you want to do is use an e-signature solution that uses advanced digital signature technology. And this is essentially an encryption method that will temper seal the documents and visibly invalidate them if any changes are made. <clears throat> so think of this as a type of built-in security that guarantees the integrity of the e document and helps protect you and your customers from any sort of fraudulent behavior. Now, when you're evaluating a solution, have a look and see what type of anti-tempering controls are built into the eSign document, and see if you can easily verify the integrity of your document. So if you take an example using eSign Live, if you have multiple signers and multiple signatures on the document, every time a signature is applied, we'll temporarily seal the document and embed the subsequent audit trail inside the eSign document. And we'll also provide a quick and easy way to verify the integrity of that document with one simple click giving you access to a permanently embedded audit trail that essentially travels with the e-signed document. This is actually something that Alan is going to cover later in the demo that you'll get to see in action. So some e-signature solutions will only apply a temporary cell wrapper at the end of the signing process and won't actually apply a digital signature in between signers. And they won't embed the audit trail inside the document. And this is something that can unfortunately put you and your organization at risk. So you want to be aware of these key differentiators in document security when you're evaluating e-signature vendors and solutions. After looking at security, then the next thing you want to look at is the evidence. So when our regulated customers go through an audit or have a transaction challenge, it's really important for them to have a comprehensive audit trail easily accessible to demonstrate compliance. So uh, compliance, sorry. If you've ever participated in an audit process, you know that having complete audit trails helps to ensure you can easily demonstrate compliance to both internal and external auditors. Um, the problem is that this can be a really big challenge in the paper world, and that's why there is such an advantage with digital processes. 
which allow you to capture in much greater detail information on both how and when a transaction took place. The signed document with its standard audit trail gives you reliable information on what you signed, but it doesn't really tell you how you signed it. And for that, we recommend leveraging a visual audit trail. Think of the visual audit trail as a visual recording of exactly how the process took place from start to finish. Sort of like a black box recorder that captures and replaces all the web pages and all documents, as well as every single action that took place during that signing ceremony and how long the signer spent on each page and document. This makes it possible to completely recreate a signing event years after the fact, which in the end can really help to streamline the audit process. It can also be used in the event of consumer dispute or if a customer ever comes back and, for example, says they never saw a document or a page. Having covered audit trail, security, and adoption, what I want to show you now at a high level is where e-signatures can fit into your current processes and your existing systems. Um, speaking with many prospects every day, um, I hear this common misconception that a tremendous amount of development and process reengineering effort is required in order to move a process off paper and into the electronic world. And I want to reassure everyone that this is really not the case. Um, the slide that I'm showing up here will help explain what I mean. So if you start looking at the left of this illustration, um, we have your customer who today comes to you, perhaps over the phone or in person or even to your website. So when the time comes, data is captured to complete the first step of a process. Uh, this may come into an e-app or could come from any third-party system. Now, once the final application is completed today, you are hitting a print button to print whatever those documents are. But if you're using e-signatures, this is the moment in the process where the upstream documents would simply be handed off to your e-signature solution, or in our case, um, directly into eSign Live. So a customer communications management system or policy admin system are common upstream systems that could feed those process documents. So once handed off into the eSign platform, we take care of everything from sending out notifications, identifying signers, capturing signatures, and securing your documents. And once that's all done, the documents are handed back and are ready for download. And then you can store the eSign document in any system you want. So what's great is that they don't have to stay in eSign Live. Your eSign record is a standard PDF document that you can store and archive wherever you like. And now looking at this process, I just want to dig a little deeper into the workflow. Because an eSign transaction is about more than simply capturing a signature. There are actually many different use cases for how they can be used. So consider for a moment how a customer would eSign when they are face-to-face -face with you compared to when they are sitting at home on their computer. And I always like to take the opportunity to show our audience how e-signatures can fit into a larger business process. So while sometimes people associate document signing with the act of simply signing a document, it's important to remember that that signing step is actually part of a larger process that requires all of the different elements that I'm showing on this slide. And I'm actually going to break those down into seven steps for you. The first one being access. How is the customer or employee going to access the transaction? Obviously, participants need to get into the eSign process somehow, and that can happen in several ways. Uh, it can be through an email annotation or a link or button in a web portal. Um, so think about your internet banking portal, for example. That would initiate or kick off. So this is the process. Step two is authentication. And there is no one way to do this, so you definitely need and want multiple options for user authentication. Um, um, <clears throat> sorry, so this can include leverage, leveraging login credentials and SMS text code, uh, challenge response questions, or integration with ID verification systems, systems like through Equifax or multiple factor authentication solutions like DigiPass. Okay, so then your step three is presenting the documents to the signer for review. And this can be done on screen or on paper. It's pretty clear. Uh, step four is data capture. So chances are many of your forms have text boxes, check boxes, radio buttons, drop down lists, and so on. That data needs to be inserted into the, fir the form before it can be signed. And you want a solution that will enable you to capture form data at the time of signing and then make that data available through downstream systems. Step five is document insertion. This is one of those steps that may or may not apply to your particular use case. But as an example, say you have a sales rep in the field meeting with a new client. That rep may want to upload some additional proof of the client's ID. Um, they could take a photo of the client's driver's license, for example, and upload it to the e-signature workflow. The next step is signing the document. 
This is the step that most people associate with e-signature solutions. And there are several options. You can click to sign. You can do a handwritten signature on a signature pad or even a signature on a tablet touchscreen. With eSign Live, you can select the capture method that is most appropriate for each specific user role or channel. And then the last step is document delivery. So the documents are delivered to your backend system and your customer receives an email with the eSign document um, as an attachment or with a link to where they can securely download the document. And there you have an example of an e-signing workflow. Now, this was obviously a static visual representation, and if you're likely, if you're like me, it's likely more helpful to have a more dynamic representation of how this all works. Uh, so, with that, I'm going to pass the presentation to our sales engineer, Alan, uh, who's going to do a live demo for everyone. Alan, are you ready? Alan, are you on the phone line? I think we're just waiting for your screen share to open up. And just double check your mute because we're, we're, I'm not hearing you. Oh, goodness. I was really hoping that this demo was going to come through because this is a really exciting thing to be seeing here. Um, Alan? I'll tell you what. Um, um, hopefully we can have Alan come back in uh, a little bit later. Uh, Olivier, how about if you just go ahead and continue on with your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Just give me one second. Okay, so um, I was just going to cover the integration and options for uh, getting started. Um, so I know that um, you know when uh, looking at e-signatures, one of the questions that I'm often being asked is uh, about the implementation. So people are asking me, uh, can this be used on the public or private cloud, or even uh, for a non-permit installation of the software? Um, the great news is that all avenues are possible, and really what you want is to be able to have that choice between either deployment option, and obviously without ever compromising on security, scalability, or functionality. Um, the great thing about uh, SaaS or software as a service is that you can get up and running right away with little to no IT involvement. So if speed to market or cost is a concern for you, then the cloud is a great option. On-premises is the choice for customers that are looking for maximum flexibility and control and that have the resources to install and run the software behind their firewall. Now, eSign Live is unique because it can actually be deployed on-premises in your own data centers so that you have full control over the environment or on a private cloud or public cloud through any one of our multiple data centers around the world. At the end of the day, it's really up to your organization to decide based on your business compliance and IT requirements, um, but having that flexibility to select a, a deployment method that suits your organization's need is a huge advantage. Uh, should I keep on going? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Go, yeah. go ahead and through uh, your whole section here, and, and hopefully we can get out yeah. and come back in just before we take questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, depending on your use case and the plan, uh, the scope of the plan news, and uh, what IT resources you have available, um, you know, getting started is actually not that hard. You may choose to go with our out of the box e signature solution, or you may prefer a more integrated um, option. So. Just starting with no integration, a professional plan can get up and running immediately, and that's like right away. Um, you sign up for a free trial, and you can start sending documents with no IT involvement. So if IT resources or cost is a concern for you, and the volume of documents you're sending out for e-signature is small enough, then this might be a good option. But even when using eSign Live in this manual way, uh, you can still benefit from a number of productivity features. For instance, you can use our print driver to send documents to eSign Live from any third-party application. And you can create and save templates in the system so it's really easy to send out transactions. Um, the other option is integration with your core system. So this can be your policy admin, your portal, uh, your CCM system, and this is for really a straight-through process. So imagine, for instance, that 
clicking a send for e-signature button on your website automatically kicks off an e-signature transaction. We also offer APIs and SDKs for our customers that have a high volume of packages and have developer resources available. And keep in mind, you can also embed eSign Live into your own web or mobile application using our open API and SDKs. Or you can leverage our web service or mobile app to get documents out for a signature. And what's also great is that you can use eSign Live through third-party applications like Salesforce and SharePoint, SharePoint sorry, that plug directly into these applications. Um, I don't know if Alan is ready to uh, uh, to present. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and looks like. Um, oh, fabulous! It is buffering. It is streaming through. Wonderful. We're going to turn it over to Alan Carter right now. So we can see a screen, but Alan, I'm not able to hear you. Have you uh, come off of mute? This is the fun of a live event, folks. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, okay, um, and he's pinging us here that he we're not able to hear him, so. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to do a live demo for you today. Um, yeah. Please, uh, Olivia is going to uh, just talk about a couple of extra things here. Um, Alan, if you can go back onto mute and um, uh, because we're getting some static here. But Olivia, go ahead and talk about um, what, uh, what you're going to close up here with and then um, work to what we can do for arranging personal demos for audience mm -hmm. members. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I just want to add a few words. So I have been, uh, you know, speaking to customers and prospects uh, for the past year. One of the things that I'm hearing often, and I, you know, it's something that I also see, is that uh, you know customers are kind of uh, afraid or they think it's very difficult to uh, to use these signatures. But honestly, it's very easy. I mean, even for myself. Uh, you know, I just started here, and right away uh, I was able to use eSign Live uh, very easily. I mean, you can go on our website, uh, download the free edition, and it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. You don't need any IT resources. So, I mean, I guess my message for you is don't be afraid. Um, you know, just go out and test it out, and it's free, so it's really uh, no harm for you. Yes, thank you. Um, and just to let the audience members know that um, there are some resources that we do have available for you to the right of the slide area. This beginner's guide that eSign Live has put together, I've, I've read it previously, and it's a really good outline and tip there. That's in there, and also earlier in, the, in Olivier's part of the presentation, he talked about a, um, a case study, and the link to that is also in the resources. Click on those links, it's going to open in a new browser tab, and then after the webinar you can save that off and, and fully download the resources and be able to take advantage of that. Um, and also there's a little bit of contact information for um, the folks at eSign Live, um, not only in the bio section, but also um, in the speaker bio section, but also in that resources list. So please take advantage of all of that. Um, we do have a lot of questions that have come in here, and we're going to do our best to get to as many of these as we can. And um, let me take a couple of the questions um, and then see what we can do to have Alan uh, give that brief demo one more time. Um, but just one of the questions I do want to ask um, Rich Medina here, someone is asking about that their company does a lot of handling IT products, like with service agreements, invoices, um, departments that deal a lot with contracts. Can you just give throw out a, just a bunch of examples where employing e-signatures would be very useful and very helpful in the process flow um, for types of work that people do, for what, what work people do? Sure. <clears throat> Sorry. Sure. Um, so the areas to look for are, you know, high volume or high value or both. And there are ones that are um, not high value necessarily, but are high volume, and those are often the easiest ones. So those are areas where it's um, 
I'm not sure if this application that you're talking about is internal use for employees or is outwardly facing for customers, um, but it's typically anytime you're maintaining the relationship, so whether it's an address change or some other information or whatever, um, where <clears throat> there's already the, you know, it, um, you haven't messed up the big deal, um, you're maintaining it. So it's easy to, and so if something goes wrong, you've got the customer and you can repair the damage. Um, but look for those. So typical ones, again, as I said, are um, address change. Anytime that you're, you're, and you might have to change a relationship, change a contract in a modified way. Then the, uh, the the big area is the good area is where it's high volume as well, where you're you're doing new business. It's a new contract. Um, it's a it's a, um, a, a an add on to the contract and so on, uh, maintenance of the contract, where um, it's not only high volume but also high value. Um, particularly with with computers, those are early adopters and so on, and so they're used to this sort of thing. By the way, the, so the golden the, – go ahead. I'm sorry, Teresa, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead, Rich. Go no, ahead, I was going to say the – absolutely. So the um, kind of the leader in this area are financial services, um, not trust, but um, other areas in, in financial services um, where they've been doing it for – they're probably the farthest along in this sort of area. So, again, loan origination, loan maintenance, and so on. Okay. Okay. Um, we are – We've been doing some troubleshooting behind the scenes here. We're going to do our best to let Alan Carter do this demo because it really is fascinating. So, Alan, um, first of all, let's check to uh, make sure that we have your sound coming through. Okay, so just to check. Oh, lovely. I hear your voice. And the screen <laughs> is buffering. Fabulous. Please proceed with, the, okay, with your demo of this product. Okay, thanks to everyone for uh, bearing with us while we went through a few uh, technical hitches there. So on the screen is just really an overview of uh, a very simple process that I want to show you. Um, on the left, we're, we've got some representative of the company, um, and on the right, remotely, is the customer. And as you see in step one there, they're going to have a telephone conversation. They're going to agree some business. Out of that is going to come the document representing the contract, etc., uh, and that's going to be pushed into eSign Live. And then in step three, we'll have the uh, manager, whoever he is from the company, actually view and sign that, followed by the customer viewing and signing the same contract remotely. And out of the process, as you can see in number five, we'll get the tamper evident, sealed, uh, and e-signed document. Okay, so with that said, let's go in. Now, here I am acting as the, the, the company manager. So I'm logging on to the company system, whatever that is that I need to uh, put together the, the contract that I'm agreeing with the customer over the phone. So this screen that you see here is really, it, this is nothing to do with the e-signature platform at all. Uh, this is the existing system. It, it might be a CRM, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really where we gather all of the information about the business that's going to be done. Now, typically in most systems, when we come along to them, uh, at the bottom here, you'll see this button that says send free signatures. And uh, in existing systems, before they're digitized, then this, of course, will be a good old send it to the printer. Now, of course, when you're losing a system such as eSign Live in the background, um, then what you're actually going to do when you hit this button is send the document rather than to a printer, you're going to send it over in digital format uh, to the to e-signature the e platform. Now, immediately what, what we show here is the result of doing that for the manager who is currently logged in. So he doesn't have to re-authenticate. He was already logged into to whatever the business system was. Um, so he is immediately presented with the view of the contract so that he can look down it, uh, check that it's all okay, uh, and then sign. Now, you'll notice that it's very intuitive uh, where you need to sign on the document. Um, so a simple click is enough to say that I'm happy with the business that is being written here. Now, for this, this is just a simple click to sign. Uh, and this is also a very simple document, and we've got just one signature in the document. Um, so I'm immediately asked now to confirm my signatures to the document. And when I click OK, you'll probably see the spinner on the screen. And this is where we're actually applying that digital signature, that tamper evident seal uh, around my signature into the document. And this just ensures that nothing can be changed within that document after I have signed. And there we see uh, the, fi the final document 
um, as it is after the, the manager has finished. So, so that's all well and good, but now, of course, we need the customer to also come in and sign. So they, they are sent a simple email invitation uh, to their email account, and I'm just going to come in here. And what they'll see is that they have an invitation to come in to participate in this e-sign process. After clicking the button, um, then they will be taken into the eSign Live process. Now, of course, because this is an external customer, um, then really what we're doing is pushing them through an authentication step. Uh, and Olivier mentioned all of the types of uh, authentication that we support, and this is a simple uh, question answer. This is typically where we'd see things like uh, an SMS one-time code or even things such as KBA, etc. So if I successfully enter the code, uh, then as the customer, I'm now also brought into uh, the e-signature ceremony. And again, I can see that the branding has been uh, passed through. So I have a seamless process with uh, the brand that I love and trust. Um, and I can now see the document exactly the same as the sales manager saw. I can see that the sales manager in this case is, is signed first. So I can clearly see the signature there. And I can also see the place where I need to also sign. So what most, what most people will do, of course, is they'll want to get through this process as quickly as possible. But if you notice here, there's a field that is mandatory that also needs to be filled in before I sign. So I'll go ahead and try to sign. And we can see that it's enforced that I must enter this field before I sign. So I'll come down now and I'll actually enter the field. and then we're allowed to proceed to sign the document. Now, this time I've left it as a, as a capture uh, hand-drawn signature, just to really show that, that we can do these signatures in many different ways. So I will now draw my signature, and then click OK. Once again, I'm going to be asked to confirm my signatures to this document. And again, I'm going to say OK, and now again, um, as Olivia pointed out, um, we are applying the tamper evidence seal again uh, for the customer for their signature in the document. So we, we, we now know that there's nothing that could have possibly changed uh, after the customer signed also. Um, and that's really the end of a very simple demo there. Um, just to want to show you really quickly um, what the actual first level of evidence looks like. So this is the actual document itself and I've just downloaded it directly after signing it. And I can see it's just opened in an Acrobat uh, reader. And here we see the document, and here we see the signatures. Now, these are not just images placed on the page. Uh, these are signatures using the, the ISO standard for PDF. Um, and a single click using just the basic reader is enough to give us that single click verification. Now we can really see uh, that this signature is valid and it has not been modified since the document has not been modified since the signature was applied. A click on signature properties, I can just drill down a little bit further. I can see the date uh, and time that the signature was applied. I can see the identifier, in this case, the email address of the person who applied this signature. And I can even see such things as the IP address that it was signed from. Um, and here we can add as much information as is passed to us. All this information is included within the signature, within the PDF, and travels with the PDF. And at that point, I'd just like to say again, thank you for uh, persevering uh, through the problems that we had there. And with that, I will hand you back to Olivier. Actually, I'm going to step in here because we're getting really close to the end of our webinar hour. And thank you, um, Alan, for the demo. We have been listening to Alan Carter and before that, Olivier Richard. And at the beginning, we were listening to um, Richard Medina of DocuLabs. And uh, I just wanted to m mention to everyone that don't forget to download the resources that's to the right of the slide area. And also, when the webinar is over, um, a survey is going to open up, and I would appreciate your feedback on that. Um, I also wanted just to mention everyone that if you do have the opportunity to join us in Orlando, Florida in the U.S., uh, coming up in 
just over a month now, um, AIM's annual conference is coming. And we have, um, to me, it's a week-long pack, but it, it's, it's only just a few days from the 14th to the 16th. Um, and it's uh, some really exciting keynotes have already been lined up for this. I'm so looking forward to hear the, hearing these speakers. A lot of roundtable tracks this year. So it's more interactivity um, with your colleagues and with your peers, as well as the presentation tracks. And so there's um, a lot of good information and networking opportunities. So check out aimconference.com to get some more information. And very much want to thank eSign Live for their support of our, uh, for being the underwriter of our webinar. Without the support from our solution providers, AIM would not be able to bring you these free educational programs. So thank you eSign Live for your, for your support and your sponsorship. So as we do bring our webinar to a close, I just want to ask each of our speakers for their closing thought or a key takeaway. And let me start first with um, Alan Carter uh, of eSign Live from Vasco. Your closing thoughts today. Yeah, I think I think for me it's uh, it's something e-signatures, as Olivia says, have been around for a very long time. It's not it's not new technology. It's not cutting edge technology anymore. Uh, and really, this is something that the business wants. Um, the users within the business they want it. It makes their life easier. Uh, and then maybe the most important thing is that your customers want it. Thank you, Alan and Olivier Richard of eSign Live. Your closing thoughts today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, a few things just I know I, I mentioned before, um, you know, getting started, you know, don't be afraid to go ahead and just download a free edition and test it out. But uh, something else, just being on the front line with the customers every day, um, I can tell you that uh, in terms of e-signatures, Europe is moving fast and you will see it, uh, you know, more and more in the coming months and even in the coming year or so. I mean, it's finding even just a, a, you know, a little area in your company that can use it, you will see that it's extremely helpful. Thank you, Olivier. And Richard Medina of DocuLabs, your closing thoughts today. Sure. I'd say uh, go with a product that you can start small, and then it can also be your enterprise standard. Um, you can get uh, rolling immediately with it um, and then expand throughout the enterprise. But make sure you do a kind of um, identification prioritization of your opportunities, focusing on higher volume, higher value opportunities. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, that is all we have time for today. For everyone, um, thank you for joining us. I appreciate your time and attention. For AIM, this is Teresa Resick, and we will see you next time, and have a really great day.